Um, I see lots of familiar faces here and I'd like to wel welcome you if you are new. Hi, Megan. Hi, Alan. Tara, Bev it's so nice to have you here. Lisa, Preston, Christiane, Anne-Marie. Oh, I met Anne Marie because I um, was actually just accepted into the Denver Startup Network, and she is one of our um, members as well. And so let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're still letting people in. Again, this will be recorded, and um, I am going to share my screen. And so please let me know when you can see that. So let me just go there. Here we go. Thank you. Can you all see that okay? Yes. All right. For those of you that have been to Colorado Career Connectors, you know that we are very open, organic. These are true conversations. We try not to be talking heads because we know how zoomed out you are. We try to bring you high level content from professionals in human resources and talent acquisition and career coaching. And Unleash Your Edge is actually my new signature brand because for two and a half years, it was Amplify Your Awesome. And people who know me know that I have an edge. And it's a fun edge. It's a dance and a movement edge. I actually, since I am in South Florida, went to the founder of Zumba. His name is Beto Perez. And I went to his class on Saturday. There was a live band. There were, so can you imagine like a Zumba class with a band? It was so fun. So I want you to think about what is your edge? What is the professional oh. edge that you want to unleash? What are those edges? And we want you to be very participative, interactive, because we want you to show your edge here. We are a completely safe environment. We do record this and we do send it out to our community. So let's hear from you. What is your edge? Let's put in that in the chat, if you would, please. And Yvette is gonna be checking that for us. If you and I have met, not met, um, I provide creative talent solutions for individuals and for small to medium-sized businesses. I'm actually doing a recruitment position for a chief financial officer right now for a growing construction company in Denver. And I coach many people throughout the United States and actually Europe and Africa as well. I am bilingual in English and Spanish and bicultural. And basically I help badass leaders just like you to unleash your professional and career edge. My background includes leading talent acquisition at Comcast Technologies, being a senior leader for university relations at Lockheed Martin. I am a Anita B. Pre Premier Career Coach, which means there are one, um, I'm one of 20 in the world that coaches women in technology, STEM and STEAM areas. And we welcome you today. My right hand is the woman that you all know. Her name is Yvette Bell. She is my director of operations. She has done all of my websites, everything for the deck today and the content. And I absolutely love working with Yvette. So she also does and has her own clients. So if you're looking for someone to redo your logo, your website, your brand, please reach out to Yvette. Um, don't first get to subscribe to Colorado Career Connectors. We unleashed an amazing website that shows you events that we have coming up, but also community events that we have coming up. For example, the Denver Business Journal or the Chamber of Commerce or the Colorado Women's Chamber of Commerce. There's always community events, like the best places to work, the Denver Post, is coming out with um, awesome community events. So you can look at our website for more information. Our agenda today is gonna be first, one of um, the women in my community who is um, our highlighted candidate today. And then we're gonna have company presentations. Um, Gallus Detox and Louis Lugo have um, sponsored us for today and then Many of you may have met Anna Brambilla, 
who is also one of our premier sponsors. So we will um, hear from them. And then we're gonna have a panel discussion where we're gonna talk about what is your edge? How do you get mentally fit and mentally prepared for a job search or for career advancement? What does professional edge mean? What does an authenticity edge mean in professionalism? What does the interview edge mean? So in the next hour and a half, and we really do encourage you to stay for the full hour and a half because you'll have opportunities to actually meet with Louis Lugo and Asali and Anna and me so that we can give you personal advice. And this is a much more intimate and personalized session than other groups that you may be a part of. So make sure you stay with us until 1.30. Dina, I'd love to turn it over to you. And I'd also invite all of you online to reach out to Dina, to get to know her. And her LinkedIn is right here. Dina, take it away. Okay, um, I am Dina Jones. And Shelly, I wanna thank you for letting me introduce myself to everyone on your webinar. Um, I have worked at quite some time at a business consulting firm. And um, it was funny because I do work with Shelly and my title there is Chief Operating Officer. But in working with Shelly, we figured out my true title is Problem Solver. <laughs> um, I, when working with a small company, you, many of you probably know you wear many hats. And um, the reason you wear many hats is at a smaller company, everything you do impacts the company's success and the company's bottom line. And the number of things I have done um, are things such as operations management, financial management, client presentations, um, you know, uh, client success or customer success, customer engagement, uh, negotiations, a, a wide variety of things. I always say that I can see the forest and the trees because I can do strategic planning along with um, the project management where I come up with the day-to-day -day issues or plans for people to proceed forward. Um, for many years, my job brought me great joy. And in fact, the founder gifted the company to me when he retired. And that made me very proud and uh, honored that he did that. Unfortunately, there was uh, one issue with that. He gifted it to me with a million dollars of debt. So I had to figure out a way to um, alleviate the debt and set it up so there could be a buyout and um, make that sale take place. And quite frankly, I did that all within three years. That I feel is my greatest accomplishment when it comes to work is that I was able to do that. I call myself the grease. Um, Shelly didn't like that. She said, don't you need the glue? And I said, no, um, grease make things, make um, things work. You know, it's the, uh, the products go smoothly and people run properly. Everything just kind of works the way it's supposed to when you have grease keeping everything going, the wheels uh, uh, properly moving. And that's why I see, feel that in those three years, I was able to get the company to the point where it was out of debt and I could sell it because things were moving the way they were supposed to. Um, after all this time though, I am to the point where I realize there is nothing more that I can learn, nothing more, no place else that I can grow to at the company I'm at. So um, Shelly's been working with me to define my priorities and um, well, figure out what my next opportunity is. And really enjoy the things I have been doing. So I don't really want my activities to change, but I'm trying to figure out my priorities per se. And I have several of them and I can't really say they're tangible, um, but let me just kind of give you a list. I choose location over industry. High integrity and ethics, high on my list. I want something in person over work at home. I've been here too long. Um, 
client facing over behind the scenes making things be the grease anymore. And on a personal note, I want to dress professionally because 20 feet away from me is my pantry. <laughs> so, and um, <laughs> my LinkedIn information is below and I'd appreciate connecting with anyone in this webinar. Thanks. Awesome, thank you, Dina. Great to have you here. And um, I really do encourage all of you to get to know Dina. And um, let's go ahead and move on. Louie, I'm so excited to have you on our webinar today. Louie is a good friend of mine and the Chief People Officer at Gallus Medical Detox Center. Louie, why don't you introduce yourself and your company? This is your 10 minutes as our sponsor. Awesome, thank you for the introduction, Shelley. Um, yeah, so I, uh, I'm Chief People Officer for Gallus Medical Detox Centers. Um, I'm coming up to my one year anniversary in this role. Um, very grateful to be doing this work and helping support my organization. Um, you know, what we do is, is really so special. Um, we help people um, with substance use disorder. And um, we do specialize in uh, opioid uh, addiction, but really we, we treat every substance you can imagine. Um, and not only that, I, I think one of the pieces that I really love about what we do is that we, um, from, from the patient side, it, it's very much holistic. So we have uh, sub, subject matter experts in behavioral health. Every clinic has a, an LCSW and just the way that we approach what we do is very much with respect and dignity. Um, so I'll talk about a little bit of that in a moment, but um, a little bit about Gallus Detox. Uh, Gallus, yeah, Gallus Detox here. Um, we've been around for about 11 years. We started in Arizona, in uh, Northern Arizona, Prescott. And um, today in our current entity with any uh, private investment partnership, um, we have uh, two clinics that have been running for uh, a fair number of years in Phoenix and Denver. Um, this year has been and is quite exciting for us because about a, a month ago, a little more than that, we opened our Las Vegas clinic. And over the uh, next three or four weeks, we'll be opening in San Antonio and Dallas. Um, so, you know, right there, you can, you can put the numbers together. We've effectively doubled our headcount in a somewhat short amount of time. Um, later this year, we will be adding another five clinics, um, two in September, two in October, and one in November, um, primarily um, throughout the um, Pacific Northwest and the Midwest. So another five year, uh, another five clinics next year, and then another five in 2024. So we have a pretty ambitious roadmap. Um, our clinics are fairly small. They're seven bed um, inpatient facilities. Our, our average length of stay is 4.2 days. And this is a very uh, high level environment. It's, it's incredibly inclusive. Um, everyone who wants to be there, uh, everyone who is there um, wants to be there. It's, you know, there are no restraints or anything like that. And, um, you know, I've been in healthcare for some time. I've been in HR for um, about 20 years. And, you know, I think a lot of different things come up when people hear the word detox. And, and that's fair. Um, there's a lot of misinformation. There's a, a lack of information as well. And, and there are many different types of detox as well. Um, but this is really a, a very warm uh, kind of boutique environment where um, there's a lot of attention on the patient, their needs, their, uh, it's not only the medical side that we treat, again, it is the, um, the mental health side as well, which when we look in our space and, and especially in the larger healthcare space, um, we don't see a whole lot of people who look like us, which is very exciting for us because we're, we're doing something special and we get to help people every day. So um, on the HR people ops side, for me, that's one of the real joys of what I get to do every day is, um, you know, I, I get out of bed excited to make a difference because ultimately I'm, you know, I'm part of a team and I'm heading up a team that, um, 
directly supports our people who are making a difference in other people's lives. And then also, and because we're a fairly new organization, um, we also can move the needle pretty quickly and make our, our company a better place for our people to work every day. So that's, that's really important to us. Um, what I'd like to do is share the, uh, our mission, vision, and values and give you a little bit deeper of a look into, into what we do. So our mission is to provide the highest quality inpatient medical detox services using proprietary evidence-based IV medication protocols and oral medications to avoid cross addiction and promote recovery delivered by highly trained and compassionate medical staff in a safe and comfortable patient environment that optimizes treatment outcomes. So um, again, the, the highest quality experience for our patients is, is what we invest our, our time and capital in every day. Um, our vision is to be recognized as the first as the best first step in overcoming substance use disorders for patients needing medical detox and to be recognized as a center of excellence for medical detox services, leading the field in the science, professional education, staff training and customer experience. Um, now, when I came on board last, uh, last April, we actually didn't have values. And so um, we had a pretty comprehensive but fun process um, for us to identify our values and, and what, you know, what our uh, North Star basically was. So we have three values. Um, our first is compassion, treating the whole person with dignity, respect, and empathy. And one of the things that I really enjoy about the compassion piece here is that, and in values in general, what we've identified is that a lot of companies have values that are very customer facing. They're, they're very outward facing. And there's not as much uh, intention around the, what the direction of that, those values are to our people. And so the compassion piece also um, re regards our employees, treating them with uh, dignity, respect, and empathy. And I, I think sometimes when we look at workplace culture, that really kind of gets lost. So that's something that, that is very important to us, that kindness uh, piece. Um, also, next is collaboration, an unwavering focus on a testimonial worthy customer experience. Um, Again, that's, that's external and internal. We have so many uh, different subject matter experts in different fields that every day is a collaborative effort. And that's a lot of fun. Uh, I really enjoy that. And lastly, um, excellence, a commitment to the highest standards in everything we do. I mean, that's, that's something that, again, gets me out of bed at, um, in the morning. And it's really all about how can we be the best at what we do? That's fun. You know, that's fun for me and for my team um, doing something very well. And, you know, I think what we tend to see also in, in people ops and, and organizational excellence is that, you know, when you're good at something, the lift every day tends to be less. It tends to be an easier lift and if you're operating at a high level. So um, that's a little bit about Dallas Medical Detox Centers. Um, I have some other pieces to share a little bit later, but I I think I might be out of time. So you tell me, Shelly. So I think you're doing great. Thank you so much. Um, let's move on to Asali. And can you all see my screen again? Okay, perfect. Asali and I are new friends and I've heard her talk about her story. And as a career coach and strategist for businesses and people in life, and this, as the CEO of um, Empowered by Asali, I'm so excited for her to be part of our community here in Colorado. Um, she has been out here visiting us a couple times in the past six months. Um, she's actually one of my peers with my personal coach and my professional coach. So Asali, I'm so happy and blessed to have you here. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do. 
Absolutely. I'm a Solly Lock Ellison. I actually have a couple slides and I guess I need a little point of clarification. I had them to share the Unleash Your Interview itch. <laughs> Go ahead. When, when we, when, so you're just doing an introduction now. Sure. We'll, we'll, um, you can show them while you're doing your 10 minutes of interview edge. Um, during the breakout or? No. Um, okay. we have, we'll introduce that for you. So All right, we're just cool. doing an introduction. Okay, great. Well, I'm just going to start by saying thank you very much to Shelly for trusting me here today and inviting me. Um, I have had a really, really interesting uh, journey that right now what I'm doing is providing career, life, and business strategy training and coaching support to people who need it. My journey has been one in corporate where I started out on the administrative track that journeyed into an executive assistant track that moved into heading recruiting for a 300 person engineering firm. And a lot of how I was able to accomplish that was building relationships, building relationships, learning a whole lot about people and really being my authentic self in those environments and supporting people with coming up with strategies that were really, really working to connect executives to the common, I won't even say the common employee, but you know, everyday people that were essentially working within the firm. And so I've done that um, by, uh, it's been a really fun journey just because those connections have allowed me to get insights from people. And then those insights led to conversations that led to how can we come up with solutions that make this environment one where you want to stay, um, to make this one an environment where you feel heard, seen, and included. And I was able to create so many um, amazing outcomes by partnering with marketing and, and, and leadership and the different um, business units. Um, and I am looking forward to continuing my work on a level where I support folks on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but some organizational support as well. And so that's pretty much where I'm at right now. I have more information and insights I'd love to share with everyone. My passion is really empowering people to communicate their truth and articulate their expertise so they can flourish. And I'm happy to be here today. Awesome, thank you, Asali. Before we get to that, Anna, do you wanna introduce yourself? Sure, happy to. So I am uh, honored and thrilled to be a corporate sponsor, premier sponsor of Colorado Career Connectors. I uh, offer a completely different, uh, not completely, a, a tangential um, but related uh, service to working with all of you. So I come to this, I basically, not basically, but I help people uh, who are in career transition, who are looking for something else, who have that entrepreneurial desire but not sure where to start. Um, I uh, own my own company with the Entrepreneur Source. And basically what I do is I help people explore options outside the traditional corporate model. Uh, so many of my clients are just sick and tired of the nightmare that corporate America has become. And it's really so frustrating for so many people. They have that desire to see what else is out there. And so I offer a no cost, very safe environment. You see my sign behind me, welcome to the safe zone. And I take that seriously. And that's a safe place. I offer a safe place to explore franchising and business ownership. So mentioned there's no cost to working with me. There never will be. And what I like doing is to provide an additional path of exploration for my clients. I see several uh, familiar faces on here and I've had the honor and the pleasure of working with many of you and I really am grateful for that. And what I like about what I do is helping people realize that there are things out there that they never knew existed. My one and only goal is to help people explore business ownership simply as an option. I highly, highly, highly encourage you to keep searching your job search, keep looking at all of your options, think about starting your own business if that's something that's of interest to you. But in the meantime, see what else is out there. 
We have found in the 37 years that the Entrepreneur Source has been around, um, and by the way, the Entrepreneur Source is itself a franchise, so I'm a franchise business owner doing what I do, and I help people simply, again, explore, see what's available, no cost, no commitment, just a place to see. The vast majority of my clients uh, will never have never even considered owning a business or owning a franchise specifically. And what I get to do is I get to help them explore things that they never knew existed. Only 4% of the franchises in our portfolio, and we have a couple hundred, actually I think we're up at 250 at this point, have anything to do with food. So most people think fast food, they think Subway, they think, they think McDonald's, they think of the million, $2 million investment that's necessary. In our portfolio of 250 franchises, only 4% have anything to do with food. So nothing to do with food. The, the rest are in things like fitness, kids, seniors, home improvement, home restoration, uh, fitness, business services, just a huge, huge travel, uh, everything you can imagine. Um, and we have the, unlike the million dollar, two million, three million dollars that a McDonald's costs you to get into, the majority of our franchises are a tenth of that. And funding is very, very readily available. So I've put my chat, my contact information um, in chat. I'll do it again. I encourage you, just get onto my calendar. There's a, an online calendar. Schedule 15-minute conversations with me. No pressure, no commitment. Just see what's out there. Happy to chat with you. Happy to give you education. I'm a fifth-generation educator. So it's deep in my blood, and all I care about is helping people learn and explore and figure out things that they never knew existed. Um, and very excited, uh, Shelly and I did some really cool videos not too long ago and I'm working on getting them up on my portfolio and on my website and uh, just so thrilled to be here. I so believe in what Shelly is doing and seen some incredible stuff already in the just over a year that you've been doing this and it, it just I'm so excited to be in on the ground floor to really help explore and shape and see where everything's going so i think i'm about out of time so and uh, uh yvette's been great to put um put my contact information uh and stuff in there too so i'll put my calendar on there but I encourage you all of you to reach out and uh welcome to a great panel thank you louis anna and asali part of what we do here is all about connection and networking I am so lucky because Anna and Asali and Louie are all part of my network and I know each of them quite well. I try and bring you the highest quality content and topics that you might not hear about in other locations. Um, I'm gonna share my screen and part of my own business and part of who I am is I walked El Camino de Santiago if that sounds weird to you, it's the way of St. James about seven years ago. And I'm actually going to be taking a group this year to back to Spain and Portugal um, in September, late September. So I want to offer this to everyone because it's about having that inner pilgrimage to go really deep into who you are, not just from a career perspective, but from a life perspective, because if I've learned anything in the past three years that I've been an entrepreneur and a woman owned solopreneur is that everyone, especially post pandemic, they want to live differently. They want to decrease their stress. They want to have peak performance. And seven years ago, when I went to Spain, I am bilingual in Spanish, so I will be your tour guide. Um, we just put out an interest form um, and we're about to launch our website on this. It is two days in Porto, Portugal. We're going to get acclimated to Portugal. Then we're going to take a train up to a town called Tui and we're going to walk for seven days, about 80 miles. It is a pilgrimage. You do not have to be religious or spiritual for this. Um, you do have to be inclusive and understand that this type of Camino or this type of travel is really not about high maintenance. It's about 
organic food. It's about looking at and, and solitude and, and looking at parts of your soul that you might have hidden away that you know that's ready to burst. So if you are interested in this, I can't wait. I have four people signed up so far, including a vet, if that's going to help me and go. I'm looking for six more. And it is going to fill up pretty quickly. Um, men and women, but you have to be inclusive. You have to be politically open. We welcome anybody from any immigration status, sexual orientation, um, gender orientation. And I usually pull very open and adventurous, badass adventurers, okay? So if you are interested in that, let me, um, let me know. And that's actually something I'm doing as another part of my business. Okay. April usually is like a dreaded month for people because you have to pay taxes. Yo tambien. So instead of it being dreaded, I want you to put three dates on your calendar because we're going to talk about money and values and abundance and how to have abundance while you're in transition. How to get over what I call TBS and TCS. How many of you had have, have had toxic boss syndrome? Come on, raise your hand. Toxic boss syndrome. You've been high gaslighted or lied to or things like that. Or toxic corporate syndrome, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can laugh. It's okay. I made these up. So if you actually ask a psychologist, I don't know if these are serious, but so many of my clients are sick of just being overlooked, overspoken to, mansplained, womansplained, whatever it is. We're going to have money and life mm -hmm. in career transitions starting on um, April 4th. Then we have Katie Double coming in, who's had nine years of cancer survival, to talk about life and living life as a recruiter. You guys, she's more connected than me. She's amazing. And then at the end of April, we're going to have two or three companies who are in the finance or money arena come in and we're going to do behind the recruitment curtain. So April is going to be an awesome month. Make sure that you sign up for those. Now let's get started. Okay. How many of you felt like this? That toxic boss syndrome? Sure, I see you raising your hand out there. John, how about you, Becky? This corporate toxicity syndrome. And you're like crying or like, I can't do this anymore. Right? We don't want you to look that way. So we're going to talk about your the first edge that we want you to unleash is your mental fitness edge. And what do I mean by that? What do I mean by that mental fitness edge? Is how do you respond to life's challenges, stress, overwhelm, burnout, anger, resentment, blame, shame? You know what I mean. How many of you have had those feelings as a job seeker or someone who is looking for a promotion or... You've been looked over because of your age or looked over because you are a woman in a man's environment or a man in a woman's environment and you've been looked over. Some of you on this call have been through mental fitness with me. If you want to put some shout outs for it, that's awesome. You know who you are. Um, it has really helps my clients to have peace of mind and better relationships and much better performance. So how do you get this mental fitness edge? The first thing you can do is buy a book called Positive Intelligence by Shirzad Shamim. Yvette, can you put Shirzad's name in there for me? Um, we all have these things called saboteurs and mine is, I'm a controller. Sometimes I'm a hyperachiever and I'm a pleaser. A lot of women are pleasers because we've been put in these cages to act a certain way, sound a certain way. I'm actually reading um, Glennon Doyle's book called Untamed, 
highly, highly recommend Untamed for you. And there's a chapter in that book that talks about how men are actually caged because they have to act a certain way and they don't talk from a soul perspective. This program helps you unleash some of that and unleash your mental edge when you're interviewing. When you're coming at life and you're living in that TBS, that toxic boss environment, that toxic corporate environment, and it helps you to change those things and to be more creative. Um, I can't go and look at the um, chat right now because I don't want to make the screen too white, but it's really about how do you have peace and calm? Let's say that you were doing a consulting role and that consulting role after seven months, that number was just too big for the company and the past week has sucked for you. This type of program lets you look at the positivity of where is the gift in that? What if you were just laid off? What if you were totally unhappy with what you're doing? Once the pain is so great, of staying, that the pain of leaving and that fear of leaving is contradicted because you're, you're in this environment. You're meeting people like Lisa Carmen, our resume edge expert. Lisa, put your stuff in there if you haven't already. Um, you're talking to people like Anna, who's gonna help you with your authenticity edge. And do you even wanna go back to corporate? You're talking with people like Louie, who is an amazing, authentic professional. So coming to these conversations, when you're in a down mood versus in a higher level mood is really what we try to do and what we bring you. Now, empathy is a huge part of that. So how have you been empathetic to yourself? How have you explored things differently? In order to unleash your own mental fitness edge, you've done that by being here. You've done that by putting your content inform or contact information in the LinkedIn. Deanna did it earlier by being courageously vulnerable in saying, this is who I am and this is what I'm looking for, right? Dina has been through positive intelligence and I know some of you out there have too. So, we just wanted to talk with you a little bit about this because for you to be at the top of your game and for you to unleash your own edge, whether it's a badass edge or it's a Zumba edge or it's a fun edge, whatever it is, your true edge, you've got to be right mentally, not from a mental health perspective, but from a mental fitness perspective. You remember those babies I talked to you a little bit about before? Like, we don't want you at Colorado Career Connectors to be in that negative thought process anymore. We want you to be happy, to be your authentic self, to look toward the future and to have what you truly want, which is your own mental fitness edge. I know some of you, at least seven of you, put comments in the comments. So I just wanted to start out by talking about the mental fitness edge. And we're going to have Louie talk in a minute. But if any of you are interested in joining me for Positive Intelligence, I've got a group starting on April 4th from 5 to 6 p.m. I'm happy to chat with you afterward. Or your interest form here. I do realize that you're meeting a lot of people, but let's get to some more meat. Um, anyone who's been through mental fitness, Megan or Dina or anyone, just want to chat about how men PQ has helped with your mental fitness edge? I can't see. Well, Go ahead. I, from, for my purposes, I can say that um, it was pretty amazing to see how things I didn't realize were holding me back were, um, I mean, Shelly talks a lot about the overall and um, my soul was being squished by things. And um, once I kind of set that free, not to be all wooey on you, um, 
it made a big difference in my life in many different areas. And that was very freeing for me. And um, it was, it turned out very well because she always talks about it's not just from a business standpoint, which is although the purpose I went to do this, um, but it was very freeing from an everything standpoint, which allowed me to look at the business standpoint in a different way. Awesome, thank you, Nina. Another way, another way that I really focus on that soul content is by doing yoga. And I know that we have a yoga instructor here on the phone, Tawani, welcome, nice to have you. Um, it's so nice to see you. So like I said, we want your edge, whether you're in a yoga stance and really pushing that edge, right? The next thing we're gonna talk about, Louie, is um, I'm gonna show is the professional and authenticity edge. And I would really love to see a lot of comments out there about what you're doing to push your own authenticity edge. Um, Louie, go ahead and take it away from, from here. Go ahead. Awesome, thanks Shelly. You actually provided a pretty great preface to a couple of things, um, in particular that the El Camino journey that you do, um, that, that resonates with me because uh, in the old world, that's where my family is from, there in yeah. Galicia, uh, Northwest Spain. And what, what a beautiful white country that is. A lot of people think of Spanish reds, but not the whites. And it's, it's literally one of the most beautiful parts of the planet I've seen. Um, so that's, that's wonderful. Um, you know, it, it's really interesting to get people's um, background, um, what their pain points have been, different events that have um, led them to make other decisions in their career and their life. And, and that's very resonant with me, um, you know, especially around this kind of corporate toxicity piece, um, this kind of like political dread and, you know, things that take away from professional thrive. Um, I think one of the best things that I, I really love about what I do is um, with humility, I feel that I'm, I'm part of a, a larger group that is redefining our expectations around HR, people ops, organizational support. I, I joke with my team a lot and with the, the C-level uh, people in, in my organization that HR has a branding problem and it's, it's not our job to, to rebrand that. So we, we often refer to ourselves as people ops. Um, but, you know, again, I think what, as it relates to that professional and authenticity edge, it, it's yes and. So on one side, it is the opportunity and the responsibility of the employer to create an environment of, of Thrive and support. And, um, you know, we're also dispelling so many work traumas and the way that it's always been. And um, it really requires a supportive leadership team, especially uh, CEO, um, to, to feel supported in that, you know. And so for me, when I, when I think about this, um, there, there's kind of two buckets to this a little bit uh, with professional and authenticity. Um, let, let me start with the authenticity piece here. So in the past, it's very much been a narrative of, is this okay? What, whatever this is, some sort of red button, hot button issue or something that someone doesn't know how to navigate or the group doesn't know how to navigate. And so something that, that we do at, at Gallus in our people ops orientation for new employees um, is we, we talk about um, embracing the, the full people's full most authentic selves. That if we're not getting all of you, then it's a lose-lose because it means you have to leave something at home and we're not getting your best self. You know, so one thing that I do is I, I put myself on, in the spotlight here and um, I say, okay, well, you see me, what, what do you see, you know? And um, 
this is kind of part of a, a genesis story where I learned about what passing white privilege was, which when I, when I understood it for the first time, I was disappointed, um, a, a little, little offended, I suppose, but in a way that I took some wisdom from it. And, you know, I think the piece of us wanting to be um, seen and heard and valued and supported is, is incredibly important. So, you know, when I think when most people see me, they see um, some white guy, you know, and I'm 100% Puerto Rican. Um, people don't know, they, they just kind of see. Um, and, you know, that I'm, I'm Buddhist, I'm uh, a member of the LGBTQ community. Um, I've served seven years in the Army Reserve. My, my past career was as a professional musician and I performed in 40 states and a handful of for, uh, foreign countries as a professional, uh, class, primarily classical trombonist. Um, a, a lot of times I, I joke, if people actually read my, my LinkedIn, they'll see three music degrees. Um, and so that's from my, my past life as it were. Um, you know, and then I just, I have different parts of me that are, are important to me. Um, you know, for me, a, a lot of that kind of inner work comes in many different ways being Buddhist, but also, um, you know, I'm an amateur bodybuilder. I, I won two top five medals in, in NPC competition at Men's Physique. And, um, you know, I'm not one of those, I'm not a military type. I'm not a, a meathead as it were. Um, but I, I find there's a certain solace and inner work that keeps me very even. And it's, it's all very kind of um, beautifully fulfilling, you know, and, and I have different hobbies. I live, um, I live on the water on my paddleboard every summer, um, you know. And so the, the bigger piece here is that we want, um, we, we do create an environment at Gallus that supports the whole person. Um, and that's incredibly important to us. We want to know our people. We want them to feel um, supported to the fullest extent. And whatever their needs are, we want to know. Um, you know, we are a startup and, um, you know, we had a, 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 one of our newest team members on the services team, uh, my director, Erin um, Isaac, she's a, a new mother and, you know, she had some, some related requests and it's like, oh, well, we, we haven't had that before. And, you know, we, we uh, got the resources together and it's like, okay, how does, how does this work? And, you know, we found some facilities and some uh, resources and it was all very convenient. And uh, it took some work to, to get it done, but, you know, that's what we do. We are here to support our people and it, it made, um, it, it meant the world to her and we're, we're happy to go out of our way. Um, you know, a lot of times as well, that if we solve one person for one person, uh, solve an issue for one person, we're, we're probably solving it for several people. Um, or we're creating a support system that someone will use in, in the future. Um, so what I'd like to do is, is shift to um, kind of the professional side of this too, and um, the professional edge. For me, I believe in a certain amount of what I call professional proactivity. And what that means for me is, um, I guess one of the most resonant thoughts that I'm thinking of now is that, um, you know, I have a certain number of years left with the full-time gig, as I call it. Um, and when, uh, um, I guess I'm, I'm reluctant to, to put in, um, to openly disclose that number, out of the uh, <laughs> potentially dating myself, but whatever that number is, um, that number is very important to me. And I think when I say I have X years left, most people say, oh, Louis counting down the, the days and weeks and, and years and such until he's, he's done with this and he's retired. Um, and yes, yes, but no, it's actually, what I do, I find incredibly special, if, if not sacred, in a way that is very fulfilling for me. And so for me, it means that I only have X number of years left. And that time is incredibly special to me that I want to make sure that I am doing the work that um, makes me feel good about 
when I, when I am done with the full-time gig, um, uh, I feel very good about what I've done. And so I start to think, well, you know, what's the type of work that I haven't done that I would really like to, um, you know, I look at, at future um, at different organizations or uh, industries and, and kind of do that, that analysis of where I am, where I wanna be, what's the work I need to do to, to get there, who are maybe, you know, some of the coaches or professional support that can help me into that looking glass, so to speak. So, um, you know, it, it, it's about having the tools in your professional toolbox, your toolkit, um, plus having that kind of unabashed boldness of, of being your full, most authentic self, but also, you know, it's, it's also being kind. I, I don't, I, I think we need to dispel all the stereotypes that if you know you're you're a strong leader, you you don't have um, the softness or the the ability to be your fullest emotional self. And um, and I do that with my team. You know, I, I talk to them about um, how are you feeling, okay? And you know, good, great. We talk about the great. If it's bad, we talk about the bad and why. And I think that is becoming more of an embraced modus operandi of being more emotionally open, um, talking about what that is for people and, and really digging in, you know, to that, to that fuller self. So um, before I forget, I do want to say that um, Gallus is looking for um, a, a couple positions, some mostly doctors, um, but in particular, we are about to post for a physician recruiter. So I just wanted to mention that before I uh, kind of conclude here. Um, but I think what I would say in closing about professional and authenticity edge is to show up as your most authentic self is to show up as your best self and continue to curate and cultivate that person, that you. And it, it takes work. Um, and the, the juice is totally worth the squeeze, as I like to say. And um, as we continue to cultivate our, our personal and professional selves, we become better at what we do. And we, we help our organization become a better place to operate in. Um, and that's, that's something that's a very special calling to, to me, my people, and my organization. So, um, that's a, a little bit um, about professional and authenticity edge. So, Louis, thank, thank you. you so much. I'm so honored to, for you to be here. And I really love how you took it from a personal perspective and then talked about the professional edge as well, because we are one in the same. And what you talked about on how to bring both together, sometimes people feel like they have to separate both, but that's their head talking instead of their soul. And once we can get them both working together, that authenticity really, really increases so much. Um, Asali, I'd love to turn it over for you, to you to talk about the interviewing edge. And um, you are a co-host so that you can show some slides. Awesome, thank you so much. I am going to, can everyone see my slides? Mm -hmm. And hopefully you're not seeing my notes if I have any. <laughs> so I want to welcome everyone and Louie, thank you for everything that you just shared about the professional and authenticity itch. Um, a little bit of what I'll cover today, we'll hot touch on that just a bit, but um, I really appreciate what you had shared because it that is one of the things that has allowed me to grow within my career and even within my business. And so. Um, I love that in the Buddhist connection. I was born and raised Buddhist, um, but trained to respect all paths. So I have an interesting spiritual background. Okay, so welcome to my talk, um, Unleash Your Interviewing Edge. I am going to share with you four connections that will essentially help you prepare for interviewing. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Asali Naima Locke Ellison. I'm an empowerment coach, strategist, and trainer with a performance artist spin. That is my authentic edge. Um, I have uh, 
in addition to performing as a vocalist, I spent many years training and learning uh, Middle Eastern dance. And so I got a chance to perform belly dance is the Western um, term um, on stages in Turkey and in Egypt. And so I'm excited excited now to be in a space where I'm running my own uh, company where I'm helping people navigate the landscapes that they encounter in their career life and business so they can flourish. I've got about 30 plus years. Um, I use oil belay so yes I probably look young. I'm kidding. 30 <laughs> plus years of combined experience in administration, marketing, training, and in people engagement and recruiting. Um, I gained it from working with senior managers and C-suite executives in engineering, investment banking, management consulting, and a couple other um, industries. Um, there was a time in my life uh, when I was younger, I'll say, where I really um, did not want to commit to working with a company because I had this uh, interviewing edge that would allow me to go in and get temporary assignments, but they would always be with the C-suite. And getting in those environments, one of the things that I found was that whether it was C-suite or being, what I found was that I didn't always want to be in those places as a permanent employee. And so for years, it, it, I would not commit. <laughs> I would not commit to corporate. Um, so in any event, one of my passions now though is because of the insights that I gained from being in those environments, I really have enjoyed supporting people by providing coaching and consulting to people who are really, really nervous or have chronic anxiety with interviewing, um, who have challenges with social networking or having and making difficult conversations feel like something that they can have the courage to muster. That has been my sweet spot. It supported me in my journey and it's, it's allowed me to support others. And so that's where I'm at today with Empowered by Asali um, is I just basically help people to articulate their expertise and communicate their truth in a way that makes people want to listen. Um, I am a wife. Uh, we're going on 14 years together, um, 12 years married um, to an amazing man, amazing soul. Uh, and I'm a mom to two cats, Chico and Shadow. And like Shelly, uh, I said earlier, I, am, I dance. I love to dance. It's one of the things that keeps me sane. All right, let me move on. And this is getting in my way, so I can't view. Hold on, please. So what I'm hoping that you're going to learn first is I want you to walk away with understanding uh, a concept or should I say a framework that I created for my clients called the noun connection method. I'm also going to uh, share with you a couple tips that'll help preparing feel a little less daunting when you're jumping into an interview. And then lastly, giving you just some basic tips on the inside scoop on how to find out about a firm's people, its projects, its culture. Um, and before I do, I before I introduce the noun connection, according to Grammarly, a noun is a person, place, thing, or idea. And so you may ask, what does this have to do with interviewing? And I will just clarify what the noun connection method for interviewing is that I use with my clients is it's basically a cognitive framework that helps people see interviewing as a chance to connect with a noun, meaning a company's people, um, the company itself, the position and the beliefs of that firm. And so it's basically instead of feeling like, oh my God, I got to go into this situation and I'm totally not ready to be prepared. I work with my clients to support them as seeing interviewing is almost like a treasure hunt where they're looking for ways to make as many connections to the interviewers, the company, the position itself, and then the firm's belief, meaning beliefs, meaning their mission, vision, and values, and even strategies. And so let's just, I'm going to be a little bit interactive. I know I don't have a ton of time, but let's just talk a little bit about ways we can make a connection to the person, AKA the interviewers. What do you all know about those who will conduct your interview? What's one of the ways that we can find out about our interviewers? Anyone want to share something in the chat? 
actually just realized I can't view the chat, I don't think, while I'm presenting. That's okay, Sally. I'll read yeah. off. Um, LinkedIn, LinkedIn, yeah. LinkedIn Research. LinkedIn Lots Research. Lots of people are seeing LinkedIn. Um, they could actually pick up the phone and ask the operator if there are still operators out there. They could Google them. Yes, Tawani putting straight Google search. Thank you, Linda. Thank you for those comments. Twitter. Christine put in LinkedIn and Twitter. And as a recruiter, we sometimes look at Facebook too. So if you're out there, don't put any drunken stuff out there or anything that's going to be derogatory because 95% of recruiters do look at Facebook. Um, see if any common contacts. Yes, are they mentioned in a 10K? So lots of ideas coming up. Good, good. And this is important because, yes, those are places that you can go. Um, and then the reason why this is important is because getting to know your interviewers and knowing some things about their them basically is going to allow you to build rapport. It's going to help you make a connection. It's going to allow you to be memorable and stand out. And so instead of going into an interview just thinking, I'm just going to sit there and I'm going to be ready to answer all their questions, be ready to make that small talk. You'd be surprised at how the little bit of knowledge of, hey, you know what? I actually, I, I noticed on your LinkedIn profile that you're a member of uh, Cars for Kids. I can't think of anything else right now. <laughs> Not a member, but you're a supporter of Cars for Kids. I give to that charity every year. And so those are just little nuggets of wisdom on how important it is to make those connections and use those things such as social media and or your personal network to find ways to have those conversations uh, connectors. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this because for those of you who are really, really interested, I would love to speak to you in my um, when I do my breakout session, just so I can get through some of these slides. The other connection is you have to make a connection to the company. Some of you mentioned all of those places. What are ways that we can learn though about a company, what they do and about their culture? Today we're hearing about the workplace toxicity that exists and there are lots of uh, companies right now that are putting some really glowy, wonderful sounding um, position statements on their firm. But I'm just curious, what are some other ways that we can find the real scoop about a company's culture? If anyone wants to share some things in the chat. Podcast, Glassdoor. Yep. Yep. Look for former employees. Look for people who you may know that work there. Yes. Thank you, All of Linda those. and Dina. Yes. Um. And the reason for that, you know, learning about the company is because at the end of the day, um, an interview goes two ways. And you definitely want to do your due diligence to find out what a company stands for. And yes, those statements on their websites are important but when you're connecting to your interviewers and you're meeting with them having that knowledge and insight about the company can really be powerful um, especially when you can ask questions like how is the company uh, living its values what are some things that you're doing to put put your values into work um, how how does that show up for you on a day-to-day -day basis you know living the, the mission vision and values of your firm that is a very, very powerful way, again, to make that connection that you've done your homework on the company. The other connection you're going to make, obviously, and it will not be in this order, um, but is the connection to the position itself. Um, we need to know as much about a job as we can um, so that we can showcase what our skills are and how they match what the opportunities are and so i know that most people will go and will look for the job description um, tip though if you are interviewing and you get an actual interview i should say you've been maybe uh, applying for different um, opportunities once you see that job description please take it and print it or do a screenshot of it because back when i was recruiting it was pretty funny how often people would come and maybe we had already gotten close to um, fill in the role and we pulled down the uh, job description. 
And so you may have applied for an opportunity and not get a, a, a response for two months and then you don't remember what job it was. So make sure that you're saving your profiles for your searches, whatever platforms you're using. Um, but in terms of ways that you can learn about the job, similarly, like what everyone was saying earlier, you can go to LinkedIn, you could go to a company's Instagram page. Um, you can also you know, leverage job boards. You want to going into any um, opportunity you definitely want to do your due diligence of finding ways to connect to the to the position itself and so the position description summary any of the qualifications duties etc those are really really important areas of a job description to take seriously and let me just ask how many of you are familiar by show of hands um, I'd have to put it on gallery view to see you, but let me just ask how many of you are familiar with the star method, which is, I think, the star yes, method. People on here are, um, it can be star, it can be car or soar or mm -hmm. rat. And so uh, these are just different ways, essentially star stands for situation task. Um, action and results and I, I call it the aka problem solution format where anytime you're in an interview one of the tips that I give my coaching um, clients is to highlight the areas on that job description that you feel strongly that you know how to do and then create your story write out what your result was that you created supported um, occurring or what solution you help to come up with those are very, very um, important things to do. And then practice. I have seen amazing results when people hire a coach to support them with answering interview questions. And that's something that I'm passionate about. And I'll talk with folks more if you uh, decide to join my breakout. Um, that story building confidence comes from you knowing yourself more than you trying to go in and impress someone because it is really about you making connections to the person, the place, the thing, and of course, lastly, the company's ideas. Whatever a firm says it believes in, it's important that we do our best to find our connections to a firm's mission, vision, values, and strategies. And what I will ask of you is, what are some ways that um, we can show that we align with a company's beliefs. What would we need to share? Go to professional meetings at the company. It's less important that you are a member, even in the profession, just go. Exactly. And these are, these are very, very important. The other thing is, during an interview when you're sitting in there and you're sharing your personal stories um, on how you execute at work find ways to tie it in hey you know i really love your um, vision that inclusion matters because at the firm that i'm currently working at i got I, you know i joined the includes the diversity equity inclusion committee because i really feel strongly on blah 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 and so those are just small ways that we can really rethink the whole interviewing um, preparation process because most people really really get stuck on um, overwhelm and that is something that i feel like i um, have a have a strength in providing people support and so i would encourage you um, i threw these slides together last minute but i would encourage you to join my breakout if you want to learn a little bit more um, or visit me at empoweredbysolly.com Thank you. Asali, thank you.